Cyberpunk 2077 can be quite confusing to mod, as you've all continued to make clear in the comment section of my videos over the last year. So today I wanted to hopefully make things a little bit easier by showing you the updated list of 17 mods you need to install for Cyberpunk 2077. This is going to be a list of all the things you need and why, including script extenders, modders resources, widely used frameworks, and some compatibility fixes in order to make the rest of your modding experience an absolute breeze. But before we dive into all the mods you need for Cyberpunk 2077, a quick message from this video sponsor, Atlas VPN, who are currently running a limited time Christmas deal, allowing you to get Atlas VPN premium for only $1.70 per month with a bonus six months and their 30 day money back guarantee allowing you to protect your privacy and gain all the perks of Atlas VPN for an extremely low price. So you can snag this limited time deal by clicking the link at the top of the description below, and then you'll be able to use Atlas VPN to access all of your favorite games, movies, and series that might not be available in your region, hop around on regional game servers, which is especially great if your regional servers are having issues, all while getting the added benefits of their fast connection speeds and easy to use app. Again, this is a limited time deal, so if you want to get Atlas VPN for 86% off, that being $1.70 per month with their three-year plan, bonus six months, and a 30-day money-back guarantee, if you decide it's not for you, then you can click the link in the description down below. Thanks again to Atlas VPN for sponsoring this video. All right, so the first mod you're going to need is Cyber Engine Tweaks by Yamashi, which is not only a super powerful scripting framework, allowing modders to access the internal scripting features of the game with over 1400 mods that require it for that reason, but it also comes with its own in-game menu, giving you access to overlay menus for many mods that support it, as well as the ability of setting custom keybinds for any newly added game functions, such as changing the keybind for the simple flashlight mod. But even if you ignore all of that, it's still a very powerful tool on its own, as the Cyber Engine Tweaks menu includes the console, giving you access to the developer console commands for doing things like adding items to your inventory, modifying your stats, or fixing a broken quest. And then there's a settings menu that also has some pretty handy features, depending on your rig. It's just a very powerful mod that is required by well over a thousand more, many of which you'll probably want to install, and even if you don't, it's a powerful tool on its own. But it's made even more so when combined with Native Settings UI by NexusGuy999, an in-game mod configuration menu added to the main menu and in-game pause screen, allowing you to customize a wide range of options for plenty of mods that use Cyber Engine tweaks, whether that be toggling mod features, switching between presets, modifying mod settings to your liking with sliders, or even setting keybinds outside of the Cyber Engine Tweaks overlay. It just makes for a much more customizable experience and allows mod authors to offer you a ton of settings to tweak the mod to your liking. Now, next up is Red Script by Jack3KM4, a script compiler that can be integrated with a game, allowing mod authors to add or even replace game scripts. The way to think of this is it's sort of like Cyber Engine Tweaks, but they both work together and different mods depend on Red Script than they do Cyber Engine Tweaks. So this is yet another modder's resource that is required by hundreds of mods, or more specifically, over 600, so it's one that you're going to want to install before anything else. And just like Cyber Engine Tweaks, it's also complemented with Mod Settings by Jack Humbert, which adds a Red Script Mod Configuration menu to the main menu screen, as well as the in-game pause menu. Once again, allowing you to customize a wide range of options for your mods, but this time ones that utilize Red Script instead. And since the last time I covered it, it's actually gotten a massive facelift, making it a lot easier to use with the growing amount of mods that require it. Now, next up, we've got Red 4 Extender by WAPS, which is a full-blown script extender for Red Engine 4, which Cyberpunk 2077 obviously runs on. The easiest way to put this is it's similar to that of the Skyrim or Fallout 4 script extender, meaning it expands upon the scripting functionality of the game, allowing mod authors to add all new features, modify the game behavior, add new scripting functions, or even call on existing ones. And this is a requirement for over 700 mods, some of which add some pretty advanced mechanics to this game. So as with the others, this is a must have. It also comes with a little added bonus as it even enables compatibility between Red Script and Red Mod, which otherwise wouldn't work together. And while it doesn't have any requirements itself, it's best used alongside all the others on this list. 
In fact, next up is Codeware by CyberX, yet another script extender library and framework, which itself depends on Red for Extender and further supports mod authors' capabilities when creating Red Script and Cyber Engine Tweaks mods. This is one of the newer mod requirements that released after the previous version of this video and has been rapidly growing in popularity, with over 100 mods that have released over the last few months now requiring it, as well as some older mods going back and adding new features that also depend on it. So the growing list of requirements isn't slowing down for Cyberpunk. In fact, our next mod is Tweak Excel, also by CyberX, which also requires Red4 Extender to work. As for an explanation as to what Tweak Excel is, it's a modding tool and a framework to create mods that modify TweakDB, which is the proprietary database of Red Engine 4, containing essential information about game entities and behavior. And if none of that made any sense to you, just know that over 1100 mods require it, so if you plan on installing mods, you're probably going to need it. Just as you're probably going to need a mod that it works in tandem with, that being Archive Excel, again by CyberX, which is an archive extension loader, meaning that it's a modding tool that allows you to load custom resources without touching the original game files, thus allowing multiple mods to expand the same resources without conflicts. As an example as to what Archive XL, Tweak XL, and Red4 Extender allow you to do, is it allows you to add new items to the game as their own separate entities. So you can add all new weapons, all new clothing, all new vehicles, without having to replace anything in the game which is a functionality that isn't currently supported by the game's official mod tools. For that reason, over 1100 mods also require Archive XL. Now, this next mod is one that still to this day isn't well documented, that being Material and Texture Override by Nimrain, which enables the game to load new materials and textures and is required by everything and anything that uses new files of that type including both archive mods as well as red mods. And it's often left out of the requirements for mods that do indeed require it. Despite that, this mod alone is required by well over 200 mods, with an additional 200 mods that have not updated the requirements to properly list material and texture override, and instead tell you to install the old deprecated version, that being Cyberpunk 2077 texture override. So if you've previously installed that old version, be sure to uninstall it and install material and texture override instead. As for a side note for when you go to install it, I'd suggest using the legacy archive version instead of the red mod version. Speaking of which, our next requirement is Red Mod by CD Projekt Red, which is obviously not really a mod, as it's actually a free DLC for Cyberpunk 2077, which adds integrated support for both installing and loading mods into the game. It also unlocks a few new possibilities for mod authors, such as adding custom sounds, animations, scripts, and more. So this is available on GOG, Steam, and the Epic Game Store as an official DLC, but I believe with the Epic Game Store version, it comes installed by default, while on both GOG and Steam, you'll have to install it as a DLC, so just keep that in mind. And as mentioned previously, this thankfully no longer conflicts with Red Script, given that you have Red 4 Extender installed. It's also finally been updated for the latest version of the game, as CDPR temporarily disabled it for 2.0. Now our next mod is Input Loader by Jack Humbert, a mod that automatically gathers any and all input XML files from the mods you have installed upon launch, merges them, and tells the game to load the merged XML instead. This gets around the very painful manual process that we had to go through before this existed, that being manually editing the file and merging the XMLs from multiple mods in order to make them function as intended. So it's a must install, even though it's not required by hundreds of mods, because it's a requirement of some very popular mods, such as Time Dilation Overhaul, Toggle Quest Tags, Limited HUD, Always First Equip, and more. And without it, you'd have to do these edits manually. Now, our final few mods are a bit more specific to the type of mods you'll be installing, so these are more subjective requirements. The first of which is Virtual Car Dealer by DJ Kovrick, which is a framework that adds an in-game store that you can access from any of the PCs in your apartments, allowing you to purchase vehicles added by any mods that utilize this framework. And this is actually a mod I covered in the old version of this video, despite it not being used by any mods at the time, as I predicted it was going to eventually be widely supported by other mod authors. And that is now the case with 50 vehicle mods currently supporting it. 
So if you're going to be installing any vehicle mods, you're going to want Virtual Car Dealer. Now, our next mod is somewhat similar, that being Virtual Atelier by Pacings, which is another powerful framework mod, allowing mod authors to integrate their own virtual stores in game, which can again be accessed at any of the PCs in your apartments, just like Virtual Car Dealer, allowing you to preview and purchase any modded clothing items or even weapons in some cases, instead of having to add them to your inventory with console commands. In fact, there are even mods that add vanilla game items into stores of their own, meaning it can be a handy mod even if you don't plan on installing a ton of clothing or weapon mods. Now, both Virtual Car Dealer and Virtual Atelier are complemented by our next mod, Browser Extension by R457 and Ghost, which is another framework mod allowing mod authors to add custom websites to the main browser page, instead of depending on new tabs. And while there are only a handful of supported mods at the time, two of them we have covered in this video as requirements for other mods, I could definitely see this framework gaining traction down the road for mods that could get use out of it. Of course, since it isn't required by a whole lot right now, it's more of an honorable mention, much like Virtual Car Dealer was in my video from last year. Next up is Appearance Change Unlocker, Character Preset Manager by Potato of Doom. And not only does this mod unlock all the appearance options at the mirror so that you don't have to go to a ripper dock, but the main reason I am actually featuring it is for the character preset manager, as this mod is essentially the race menu mod from Skyrim, allowing you to save and load your own character presets or use one of the many available presets that are available on the Nexus, which all require this mod. And our last mod, but not the last thing we'll be featuring in this video, is Radio Extender by NexusGuy999 a framework mod that, you guessed it, allows mod authors to introduce new radio stations to the game. Not only through the radio menu, including the new radio ports, but also the in-world radios, with full support for custom names and icons. You'll probably be surprised by just how many radio station mods there are, that being well over 200, so if you want some extra tunes to jam out to, radio mods are your thing, you're gonna need this. Now, for our last feature of this video, we have Mod Remover with Full Backup by Mana Vortex, which isn't really a mod, but rather a utility, which I think is pretty self-explanatory by the name, but as just a quick explanation, it's a tool that removes all the modded files from your Cyberpunk install by moving them to backup folders, which makes for not only a better, but faster clean install, rather than trying to manually delete mod files or wipe your entire game and re-download it. So this is actually something I'll be making a dedicated video on, but wanted to mention it here for anyone that isn't aware of it. And that's it for the 17 mods you need to install for Cyberpunk 2077. There are still a lot of mods I want to cover here on the channel, so if you're new around here and want to stick around, I suggest hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell to stay tuned on my upcoming videos. In the meantime, if you'd like another helpful video for modding, whether it be for Cyberpunk 2077 or another game, I just finished uploading a tutorial on how to disable Steam Auto Updates, which is vital so that your modded game doesn't break when new updates are released. And that is the case for every game. But that's it for this video. Thanks as always for watching. And until next time, this is Epoxy, signing off.